हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सोमा सरकार टुडेज मॉड्यूल इज ऑन सरफेस एंड ग्राउंड वाटर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लाइवलीहुड एंड स्केयर सिटी कंसर्न दिस इज योर पेपर फ्रॉम रिसोर्स ज्योग्राफी थ्रू दिस लेक्चर यू शुड बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन the basic concept of water scarcity then to understand the status and trend of water scarcity at both global and regional perspective to explore major emerging issues related to surface and ground water and also this lecture will help you to identify the major internationally accord goals toward water theme and identify gaps in recent years water issues have risen in prominence reflecting the growing need for understanding of water centrality as well as identifying the management gaps because of which huge proportion of people are actually struggling for sustainable access to safe drinking water water occurs in a very dynamic cycle of rain runoff and evaporation as we all know with enormous temporal and spatial variation as well as variation in quality that completely govern its value to people and ecosystem global water demand is basically influenced by population growth food and energy security policies urbanizations and macroeconomic processes such as trade globalization changing diets and increasing consumption besides surface water if we there is another source of water that is ground water ground water supplies are also under stress with an estimated 20% of the world's aquifers currently over exploited therefore persistent poverty inequitable access to water supply and sanitation services inadequate financing and deficient informations about the status of water resources their use and management impose great constraints on water resource management and its ability to help achieve sustainable development objectives therefore an understanding of water scarcity is essential why because it affects the views of both the user and the policy maker on the urgency to address the water crisis issues as well as their views on the most effective policies that addresses to such crisis so we are standing in front of an important question that is what does water scarcity actually mean who all are water insecure in this context if a person does not have access to clean and affordable water to satisfy his or her basic needs like uh, drinking washing and their other applications in their livelihood everyday life such persons are called water secure when in an area a large population are water insecure for a substantial time period we can call that area as water scarce area that is that particular area is suffering from water scarcity whether an area qualifies as water scarce depends on number of factors like how many people or how people's need are defined and whether the need of the environment is taken into account in this definition next what fraction of resource 
is currently available or what could be made available to satisfy these needs as well as the temporal and spatial scale used to define the scarcity. Water quality is another assessment factor for water scarcity. For instance, fresh water as it flows downstream may become polluted and becomes unusable. But such polluted water can be treated and used. Thus, some content that it is a concern whether to call water scarce or not. This question arises on whether to measure the contaminated water or the water which is being used that can be usable after treatment as a part of the resource that is treated water can it be recorded as the part of the resource or just left it out for consideration and presume that there is water scarcity. Therefore, water scarcity scenario requires an inquiry of how much water specifically usable quality is required versus how much is currently available or from where and when it can be made available. So, now let us discuss the status trend of water scarcity. Water scarcity is an ever increasing threat if we take to the human health, economic growth, energy security, environment and the global water supply. According to 2030's water resource resources groups, reports their reports suggest that charting our water future economic framework to inform decision making by 2030. The gap between the demand and the supply of water will reach about 40 percent leading to a rise in physical water scarcity in regions such as southern Europe, sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East and Asia and likewise central, eastern and western part of Africa and Oceania will experience economic water scarcity. So, human environment conditions, competition is of course one of the cause for water scarcity. Ecosystem which provide life supporting goods and services competes with human water demand with respect to multiple pressures including the need for water of adequate quantity and quality as well as appropriate timing that is the environmental flows. In their study on blue water scarcity by Hoxter and Moken, they show in 2011, uh, they carried out the study in 2011 and show that out of 424 of the world's major river basin containing a population of about 3.9 billion, environmental flow requirement are violated in 223 basins containing about 2.63 billion people facing severe water scarcity during at least one month of a year. So, if this is the scenario, then we can also put forward that water demand is also a cause for water scarcity. As per UNESCO's 2009 record, global withdrawal have tripled over the last 50 years to meet the demands of the growing population. Of course, we have to consider that this growing population has a great impact on the increasing wealth, their standard of living and consumption levels. While 
water supply over this period has remained relatively constant, the concern is demand now exceeds sustainable supply in many places with serious long term implications. Agriculture accounts for 92% of the total gold global water food footprint. Livestock and related products alone account for 27%. So, we have to understand what are the major causes for the water scarcity. On this regard, water use efficiency and virtual water trade are also to a certain extent responsible for the water scarcity scenario. Although improved methods and technologies have produced efficiency gain in all sectors in some regions, the need and potential exist for further improvement to ensure the well-being of the globally or growing world population while minimizing the impact on ecosystem and the goods and services. The need and potential for improving I mean improvement is greatest in the agricultural sector since approximately 70 percent more food will be needed by 2050 to cope with the growing population and dietary change as I have said. So, water allocation efficiency is also required at the river basin level to ensure sustainable equitable and economic water use. Now, let us have a regional perspective on the distributions and the water use. Increasing resource use efficiency, reducing waste and pollution, influencing consumption pattern and choosing appropriate technologies are the main challenges being faced by Europe and North America. While in Asia and Pacific region, the sustainability or the challenges is actually intimately linked with the progress in access to safe water and sanitation, improving groundwater management, meeting water demands across multiple uses, users and mitigating the concurrent pollution loads and increasing resilience to water related disaster. So, what we find there is a different version of concern in both the region that I have mentioned now. Now, what is the scenario in the Arab nations, Arab regions? Arab regions where unsustainable consumption or over extraction of surface and groundwater resources contributes to water shortage and threatening long term sustainable development. Options adopted to enhance water supplies includes water harvesting, wastewater reuse and solar energy desalinization. A major priority for the Latin America in this case and the Caribbean region is to build the formal institutional capacity to manage water resources and bring sustainable integration of water resources use and management into socio-economic development and poverty reduction. While the fundamental aim for Africa is to achieve durable and vibrant participation in the global economy while developing its natural and human resources without repeating the negative experiences on the development path of the some other regions. So, while undergoing this region wise detailing or the region wise scarcity analysis we can find that the causes for scarcity are different in the case or developed, underdeveloped or the developing regions and they have to find the solutions on their own regional basis. So, the major issues 
actually related to water are many. In this lecture, I have tried to consolidate it or put forward some of the issues which are very much relevant in context of our, the water scarcity. That is water security and human health. Regional differences exist regarding both absolute water availability and the limitations put forward by inadequate infrastructure. Despite improvements, lack of access to drinking water of adequate quality and quantity remains one of the largest human health problem globally. Why so? Because inadequate water supply is an inherently regional phenomena, however caused by basin level water scarcity, inadequacy of infrastructure and governance, then regional water qualities, cultural perspectives and equitability water pricing. This brings us to the second concern that is on the water security. The ministerial declaration of the Hague defines water security with the aim of providing every person with access to enough safe water at an affordable cost why to live a healthy and productive life as well as protecting vulnerable communities from water related risk and hazards investments must be coupled with adequate institutional capacities and because infrastructure development often occurs at the expansion of or the expense of aquatic biodiversity and environmental qualities so we have to understand this trade off between these two scenario about 80% of the world's population lives in areas with high water security threat. The most severe category encompassing 3.4 billion people almost all in the developing countries. Next uh, concern is equitable access to improving improved drinking water. The UN General Assembly declared access to clean water and sanitation as a human right in July 2010. Although the right is not yet recognized or applied in many nations. Recent data suggest that the Millennium Development Goals on drinking water target was made in 2010. Progress towards achieving Millennium Development Goal primarily reflects that increased use of technology and infrastructure to overcome poor water quality or water scarcity. Now when we are concerned about the health issue, let us also understand what are the water related diseases that which we are very much concerned about. Water related diseases as defined by WHO include those caused by microorganisms and chemicals in drinking water. Poors in the developing countries and the rural areas, rural area, these communities who are actually residing in these places that have experienced natural disasters are the most vulnerable community. Global health statistics indicate that Africa and South Asia contain the areas that are most severely affected by waterborne diseases. Water related diseases are a continuing public health problem in developing countries that are lacking access to 
adequate drinking water and sanitation. For example, the cholera epidemic in Hayati following the 2010 earthquake. So, when we are actually talking about water related, really related diseases, we are also concentrating or we are also concerned about the water quality and the contamination. So, how this has been a concern, issue of concern? When in groundwater, nitrate concentrations are increasing, especially in the areas of rapid urbanization, inadequate sanitation or because of the heavy use of agricultural fertilizers. Salinization of overexploited aquifers, especially in coastal areas, is of course another serious concern, particularly for communities dependent on groundwater for drinking water purposes. Groundwater contamination with arsenic for natural geologic sources affect about 35 to 75 million people and as you all know India has got a major population on which are actually directly and indirectly affected by this arsenic pollution. Surface water pollution in some region have led to the development of groundwater as a source of drinking water. So, what will be the result for such change in source of drinking water? This will result in inadvertently exposing people to these natural pollutants like arsenic. This has become an importantly significant and increasing problem in uh, eutrophications are actually becoming an important or significant problem in the lake and river and areas as well as in the estuaries and the coastal areas around the world. So, when we are actually talking about the quality of both the surface and groundwater, we are also coming close to an another concern that is the concern related to the water, energy and climate nexus. Water energy economic development and climate change are interdependent issues as we all know. Energy depends on driven by increase in human population and per person consumption related to the economic development. Meanwhile, we have to understand the use of fossil fuel energy produces greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to climate change which has of course has affected the water cycle including the extreme weather events, water scarcity, loss of ice cover and the rise in sea level. In turn responses to climate change have implications for water environment. Next concern is of course with the change in sea level is the melting of ice sheets. Measurement between 1993 to 2008 indicate that the sea level are already rising twice as fast as in the previous decades and are exceeding the rise predicted by climate models so which is a huge concern for the people and the biodiversity residing on earth. With losses accelerating over the past 20 years, if current trends continue, melting Greenland and Arctic sea sheet have become the biggest contributors to sea level rise and will remain the dominant contributor to the sea level rise in the 21st century as it has been predicted. Developing countries in this regard if we take particularly the small islands, developing states and the deltaic area 
are especially vulnerable and many with limited capacity to adopt to rising sea level or recover from those associated losses. The estimated cost of coastal adaptations range huge amount of money like which is at present it is like 26 billion US dollars may rise to 89 billion US dollars per year by 2040 depending on the magnitude of the sea level rise. So, we have to understand what is the impact of the energy development on the water resources too. While global data are lacking, the energy sector is believed to account for approximately 40 percent of total water withdrawal in the United States and European Union. Water demands for energy in these nations range from extraction and processing of raw material to driving hydropower turbines and cooling thermoelectricity plants including nuclear. Fossil fuel extractions can also have serious impact on water quality. There are cases in South and Southeast Asia where more than half of the existing or the planned capacity of major power companies are located in the water stress area and thus water scarcity is already affecting the energy production. Now let us have a look on the various international agreed goals and the gaps. Let us identify the gaps or why we are actually lagging behind. Fresh water has been a prior priority issues in all UNEP. Geo 5 regional scoping consultations with most nations identifying in paragraph 26c of the Johannesburg plan of implementation that the most important freshwater goal where the paragraph says that improve the efficient use of water resources and promote their allocations among competing uses in a way that gives priority to the satisfaction of basic human need and balances the requirement of preserving or restoring ecosystem and their functions in particular in fragile environment with human domestic industrial and agricultural needs including safeguarding drinking water quality. Although limited by global scale data gaps, the point up to which water related multilateral agreements on environment have been addressed should be focused to understand the current international agreed goal scenario. There has been a progress since 1990 in achieving goals directly related to the human well-being and economic development including access to water supplies and reduction of, of some toxic pollutants which are actually threatening human health. Water related diseases and the supply water supply in the rural areas of the developing countries however require increased attention. There has also been progress on water governance with the development of integrated water resources management plan and transboundary water agreements. However, these plans must now be implemented, adequately funded and enforced to improve aquatic ecosystem and the sustainability of their life supporting goods and services. Moreover, lack of appropriate indicators or targets for many environmental, socio-economic and governance goals makes accessing progress towards achieving water related goals and sustainable aquatic ecosystem speci specifically very much problematic. Other major barriers includes that inadequate capacity, limited access to technology and funding, informations and the data gaps and the lack of quantifiable targets. More emphasis including enhanced monitoring efforts should be directed to acquiring reliable data on the impact of climate change and extreme weather events on human health and well-being and at the end on the environmental integrity. Finally, analysis of the status and trends regarding 
the multilateral environmental agreements indicates a continuing need for research, policy development and the implementation of the national and international levels. In conclusion, it can be put forward that the food and energy security to human and environmental health, water contributes to improvement in social well-being and inclusive growth affecting the livelihood of billions. Global water demand is largely influenced by, as we have said, population urbanizations and many more factors including the microeconomic processes like globalization, changing times and increasing consumptions. The competition for water use between the users and users increases the risk of localizing the conflict and continued inequalities in the access to services with significant input on local economics and human well-being. Of course, groundwater supplies are diminishing and therefore disruptions of ecosystem through the unbated urbanization, inappropriate agricultural practices, deforestations and pollutions have to be uh, targeted and the environmental capacity to provide the ecosystem services including green, clean water, we have to be the objective. Persistent poverty, inequitable access to water supply and sanitation services, these are the deficient and the efficient informations, disefficient informations, their use and management imposes further constraints to the water resources management and their ability to help achieve sustainable development objectives. Therefore, there is a huge